2 Stuart Series steam engines part 6, completing the reassembly of the green engine, filling the crankcase with oil, cleaning the flywheel in the lathe and test running the engine using compressed air. After cleaning up the drain plug I fitted it into the crankcase, so now I can fill the crankcase with oil. I was quite surprised by the amount of oil required to fill the crankcase to the level of the line on the dipstick. In no time at all my oil can was empty, time to fill it up again. It's very important to use the correct type of lubricating oils when playing with steam engines. When I use the term steam engines I don't mean like small mammods, they're not too fussy what kind of lubrication you use with them. I use this type of lubricating oil from a company called Hallett Oils. This oil works very well for me on every one of my steam engines. It's not expensive, it's manufactured in Great Britain and the phone number's on the tin, as is the website address. This must be the first time I have not overfilled my oil can. All I need to do now is screw it back together and continue pumping oil into the crankcase. I do have a bit of a problem with steam engines that use oil in the crankcase like this. Everything's fine on compressed air, but when you run them on steam, water finds its way into the bottom of the crankcase. It's very important not to overfill the crankcase with oil, that's why there is a dipstick with a line on it, which indicates the level of oil in the crankcase. But I haven't got anywhere near that yet, and I've put a lot of oil in this thing. I do find a problem when running engines of this type using steam. Some of the steam blows past the pistons and you end up with water in the crankcase. The water ends up right at the bottom because oil floats on water. So the drain plug that I showed at the beginning of this episode is not just a drain plug for draining the oil out. It has drillings in it, similar to the holes in the drain tap of a displacement lubricator. The idea being... After a steam run, if you slowly open this drain plug, all the condensate will run out first. When you see oil, just re-tighten the plug. But it is important to periodically check the oil level, because you will lose a tiny amount of this crankcase oil during the run from the crankshaft bearings, and after the run as you drain the condensate. The exhaust manifold and the exhaust pipe on this engine is diabolical. I am going to change it, but not in this episode. It will be okay like this for now, because at the end of this episode I will be running the engine on compressed air. In my right hand is the original displacement lubricator that was fitted to this engine. That can go in my box of old displacement lubricators because I'm going to fit this one. It's a PM Research displacement lubricator. Not quite as nice as a Stuart, but it will be fine for now. I found a brass thread adapter that was perfect for the job. So here I'm fitting the lubricator into the cylinder. The first copper washer that I used was slightly too big for the job and I couldn't get the lubricator in the correct position. After I tried two or three shim washers I finally got the right one. All I had to do then was tighten up the displacement lubricator and it sat in the right position. It's really important not to over tighten brass fittings because they will shear off surprisingly easily. Like a lot of jobs with miniature steam engines, you do need some patience for this one. And don't forget, for each shim washer that you use, you have to fit the lubricator just to find out that it's not right. But eventually you will get there and everything will be fine. After a bit of a minute adjustment, I think this looks okay. But I intend to replace this lubricator with one from Stuart Models. For the steam inlet, I'm using this adapter union. It's threaded to accept a 5 16 by 32 threads per inch double union. The time has come to clean up this scruffy flywheel. There are one or two problems with this. It has an extension fitting for the end of the crankshaft and this screws onto the flywheel. This is dirty, but it's okay. It's the flywheel that's the problem. It's over to my Myford ML7R now to clean up the parts. The first thing that I did was to put a piece of steel bar into the chuck and turn it down to the same diameter as the flywheel. I'm going to use this as a mandrel. I was quite pleased with myself. This is the first cut without any help whatsoever from a micrometer. I thought, well, this looks just about right. I couldn't believe my look. I got this right in one. This flywheel would press onto the mandrel, as you can see here. 
but I didn't want to put any pressure on this flywheel because the hole in the centre of the flywheel is not what it seems. Here I'm just using some emery cloth to reduce the diameter slightly and then the flywheel slid on perfectly. This flywheel is held to the crankshaft by two Allen grub screws and it's by careful manipulation of the pressure that these two grub screws put on the crankshaft that makes the flywheel run true. Well, almost. As you can clearly see in this clip, the flywheel doesn't run perfectly true. To clean up the flywheel and make it look more shiny, I use some emery cloth followed by some wet or dry sandpaper. And even though in this clip it looks like my hand is very close to the chuck, it's an optical illusion. I fitted the crankshaft extension into the tailstock chuck, which made sure that the part ran true when it was clamped in the main chuck. Once I fitted the flywheel, it was time for a compressed air test and you will immediately see that the flywheel is not running very true. The problem is that when this flywheel was originally manufactured there was something wrong with the hole in the middle so it was bored out and sleeved but the sleeve isn't in the right place. I will address this in another episode. It will be fine as it is for this initial test. Originally in the end of the steam chest on this green engine there was a plug and this caused the slide valve to squeak and whistle a little bit. I haven't refitted this plug and the engine's not squeaking but it's leaking oil which I'm just cleaning up. If I show a quick flashback to the red engine running it does sound very different and there's no leak at all from the open end of the right hand part of the steam chest. What's the reason for this? Well it's possibly tolerance of manufacture. This was a commercially made item. It's from an Alco Firefly generating set built during World War II. And this particular example, even though it's painted red, is not worn at all, it's in really good mechanical order. By the look of the green engine, I think that was designed as a hydroplane engine, because the exhaust outlet was absolutely massive, and internally this engine does show some wear from having been run. Having said that, now, since I put it back together and modified one or two things about it, it's running well. When I check the dipstick, there still isn't enough oil in there, so it's back to the oil can and pump some more in. Is this ever going to fill up? Anyway, that's it from me for now. I'd just like to say, as I always do, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. I'll leave the engine running on compressed air until the end of the video without any narration. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.